Stylish Life. My name is Shakayla Diamond, and today I'm back with Breaking Fashion News episode 8. I know that I've been MIA on the Breaking Fashion News videos in the past two weeks, but it's been a lot going on, and I already told y'all that they will come weekly, but if there is a reason why I can't record, then I will not put out one. Um, and if you do follow me on my Instagram, which is at Keeping Up with K K A Y underscore, then I did post something on my story letting everyone know that it will not be a um, breaking fashion news video last week and the week before that. I actually didn't intentionally not have a video for this past week um i just never had the chance to record it and then the week before that i already knew i wouldn't have the chance um but we are back in motion with having our breaking fashion news co videos coming um like i said before these videos will come weekly but if there's not if there's a reason why I can't record and get it out, then it will not be out. Um, I do apologize, but yes, some things do happen and sometimes things happen. And if I don't put out one, there is always, you know, episodes one through seven and now eight um, that you can go back and watch as well as watching my other videos as well. But yes, if things don't go according to plan, then it will not come out but I nonetheless I am back with episode 8 and since we haven't gone for a few weeks um there is a lot of news today compared to the rest of our episodes so we're just gonna go ahead and get started um but I do want to say once again I do bring the breaking fashion news segment to my channel to make sure that you know my channel is a one-stop shop if you're interested in fashion news this is a place where you can come to get it and come to hear about what's been happening in the fashion industry and in the fashion world as well as seeing my personal fashion tips and personal videos I do want to give you news directly from what's going what's going on currently in the fashion industry so, like I said before, we're going to go ahead and get started. So, as you guys know, I told you before that um, a lot of fashion brands and fashion houses are banning fur. and They will no longer be making pieces that include fur. They're trying to be more sustainable, more for the environment, less uh, put less uh on like animal cruelty and things like that so a lot of brands have um been saying that they will no longer be using fur um PETA like I said before has gotten into the fashion industry and really are making their mark at this point and people are really going in a different direction um but like me there are other people who believe that fur should stay and so they're starting to come together and they are trying they're pushing back um so our first news is that fur supporters and fur advocates are pushing against this new new york law that will be basically a law saying that you cannot um buy or sell fur in the state of new york um and if you do you will um have a bit penalty um, that you will have to pay so they've been contact fur advocates have been contacting like um council people and people in office positions to basically fight against this law being brought on um it's been in talks i believe it did go to the next level and has been introduced to um have bigger decisions put on it on if they're going to pass it or not um but overall it's a ban on fur sales they do not want you selling fur they do not want you buying it in the state of new york um i do feel like there's a lot of ways to go around this i feel like there's what are you going to go around handing out tickets on the street when you see people with fur on i don't think that's how they're going to go about it so i personally don't think that this particular fur ban will be successful um they can sh well it might be su it will be successful in the business of shutting down a lot of furriers that are in new york because that's their business they sell fur and fur apparel so that's all that they sell so of course that will shut down a lot of them and close down a lot of business because fur is a very big money making industry honestly because when you really think about it you can spend multiple thousands of dollars in the fur industry especially if you're buying from furriers or from you know places like Bergdorf Goodman or places like Saks Fifth Avenue or Barney's or anything like that they sell fur and people go in there and can you know buy a bunch of coats and spend seventy thousand dollars or more so it is a very very huge business um I don't feel like this law is 
fair in my opinion i do understand what they're trying to do with banning fur in the fashion industry but i feel like to create a whole law or a whole bill to ban the sale of fur in the state of new york i do feel like it's that's going very far um there are ways around it like i said though you can always go to it if they were to pass it you can go to a different state and purchase it you can go to a different country and purchase it um as far as purchasing online i'm pretty sure you can order it um i don't know how they will do if a business has like a their business is worldwide i don't know how they'll do with that if you purchase from a company that sells in another country like you will still be able to get your fur that way um but the penalty for the first violation is no more than 500 dollars for any other violations preceding that it's no less than 500 dollars but no more than 1500 dollars um so yeah not like i said before i don't think that it's gonna go over that well i just honestly feel like if you don't like the thoughts of fur being used don't wear it if i don't like the thought of animals being killed and eating them i will go vegan um like it's we have choices these days to include ourselves in either liking something or not liking it and if we don't like it we have other options like if you like to wear fur you wear and you purchase fur if you don't like to wear fur don't wear and purchase it there can be companies who are all about you know no animal cruelty or anything like that yes that's fine you purchase from them but for the i just feel like for so many people to be so against it so far that they want to create a bill to ban the sale of fur in new york i just feel like that's a that's a big much um but i guess i'm pretty biased because like i said i'm a girl from detroit and you seeing people walking down the street with minks on and having people in your family that have minks for generations that's normal in detroit so i will always be a fur girl i will always love fur and i'm sorry i don't support the bill um and yeah i just feel like if you don't like it don't purchase it i get what they're trying to do but i just feel like there's bigger fish to fry than creating a bill on the ban of selling fur um the next one is pat mcgrath um she has gathered creatives in london to celebrate her new beauty destination which is called mothership at selfridges um the store in london and basically mothership is going to be a three month long beauty destination i guess kind of like a pop-up shop or installation type of thing um it's really big now to put up pop-up shops or things like that inside of other stores for people to come look at um but it's going to be a three month long beauty destination that's throughout one whole part of selfridges which is the corner shop and there's multiple walls with like a certain hue of gold that she loves um there's um really big gold lips in the, on that floor there's also um a gold vending machine on that floor it's pretty much just to celebrate her and her makeup line she's a she's a black woman who created a makeup line and has her own lab as well and she is you've probably seen her on instagram or something or people talking about how she her net worth is basically equivalent to or more than kylie jenner's um and she has made about probably a million or billions of dollars from her makeup line um she is an icon and she is a legend within this industry but she's more in the beauty than the fashion but um yeah she has created a installation pretty much in the selfridges corner shop that is gold to represent her beauty brand and the pat mcgrath lab has took over that part of the store and it will be there for three months um so if you're watching and you're from london or you're watching and you're going to london soon in the next three months go visit it um next is gucci debuts a temporary store for their decor um line and they will display it in milan which will run through june um next beyonce is relaunching ivy park with adidas that's really big news as well as relaunching her company with adidas she's also going to be releasing new clothing and shoes with them as well um as you guys may or may not know ivy park was a partnership with top shops philip green um i believe he's one of the owners or he may be ceo of top shop um but last year 
Parkwood, which is the comp the entertainment company that Beyonce owns, which is what Ivy Park is under. Um, they bought out um, Philip Green because he had like some sexual allegations going on. So they bought him out and now it's completely owned by Parkwood Entertainment. So it's completely owned by Beyonce. And Adidas also stated that she still remains full ownership. They are not, you know, a partner of it. It's pretty much they're going to be like a, a step for her to um, relaunch. Ivy Park and also this allows her to be on the road to be the first black woman to be the sole owner of an athleisure brand which is absolutely amazing uh, we've never had a woman come to own an athleisure brand that you know could be running with the Adidas or the Nikes or the Reeboks of the world um, but that's absolutely amazing and I can't wait to see what new things she's gonna come out with I really love Ivy Park because the pieces aren't just athleisure like you can not only wear them to work out but you can wear the pieces as outfits you can you know take the shirt and wear it with some different pants and it'll be a whole outfit or wear the complete sets and it'll be an actual outfit like I have an Ivy Park outfit and I didn't wear it to work out I wore it as an outfit and it was cute as ever Ever. um so that's why i love ivy park personally so i can't wait to see you know what she brings along i'm not sure if no actually yes yeah, she still does sell ivy park in um top shop because i was gonna say i'm not sure if they still sell it in top shop since they bought out philip green but they actually do because i've seen it in in top shop since then since they bought them out. i've seen it in there so yeah i'm pretty sure they'll just continue that as well because it's sold in other places not just top shop like they um sell it in other like high end department stores kind of like netta porter and things like that um they still sell ivy park in there so like i said i can't wait to see what she launches um with Ivy Park with her partnership with Adidas. I can't wait to see the new designs, you know, the new marketing because Ivy Park's marketing has always been a one. Like it's always been, you know, simple and to the point, but it still has always been really, really good. So I can't wait to see, you know, what she's gonna do. And it's amazing that she's going to she's on the road to being the first black woman to be the sole owner of an athleisure brand. Like that's amazing. Um Next is Tommy Hilfiger has created a Mercedes-Benz capsule collection um, that's expanding their partnership from last year that they did with the Mercedes AMG. Um, I do not want to butcher this word. Patro P Patronus. Patronas Motorsport. Um, so it's basically just another part of their partnership and they're extending this partnership. A lot of the times you see like a company or a celebrity or a brand does a partnership with someone and if it goes good, they continue to do another one and another one unless you know it's an exclusive partnership for just that one time or exclusive collection or collaboration just that one time. But a lot of the, a lot of the time, if two people do a collaboration together and it goes good they'll probably do something else together um but next this is the biggest news out of all of them but chanel and pharrell are coming out with a capsule collection this is the first time that chanel in the history of the brand has done a capsule collection with anyone so pharrell has made history the collection is called chanel pharrell which the name was decided about by carl lagerfeld as you guys probably know pharrell has been a part of the menswear collections for many many years he had a very very close relationship with carl lagerfeld and we always see him in the chanel shows or if he's not in them he's at them and he's always a you know brand ambassador for them and if you're a brand ambassador for chanel they won't call you a brand ambassador but you're always going to be around and they have very few of them if you're a fan of chanel then you know who the people are but this is absolutely iconic like this is history and um he also posted a 15 second clip also he posted multiple videos but the first one was a 15 second video like releasing the news of the fact that the collection will be dropping and that it's called chanel pharrell and then there was another video of him talking about the process of him being able to do this collection and how they took a chance on him because this has never been done before in the history of the brand and how you know he's prized himself on his individuality and he wanted to bring that to his collection 
so if you see the video throughout the video there's a bunch of like bright colored and rainbow clothing and accessories so i think that the collection will be really good and in the video you saw some beautiful beautiful black people so i think that it's going to be amazing i think that it's amazing that he broke this barrier for you know celebrities and you know artists iconic artist in the industry because Pharrell is an iconic artist and he has been for a very long time but for him to be able to come in and break that barrier of being able to create a collection and do a collaboration with the brand like Chanel like that does not happen every day so I feel like he just broke a barrier for someone else to be able to come next to do that same thing if they are up to the part of you know being able to bring something to the table um but next is all of roberto cavalli's stores in the u.s have been liquidated it happened about like a week and a half or two weeks ago um from one of my favorite fashion enthusiasts on instagram she talked about it on her insta story and she made some really good points about how of course you know you always see roberto cavalli's clothing on celebrities and you know always on the scene on the red carpets and things like that but a lot of the time when you want to do that be you know have celebrities in your clothing that does not always equate or half the time it does not equate to store sales it does not equate to foot traffic in your stores because those celebrities are waiting for those pools they're not gonna go they're rarely gonna go in the store and purchase these things because i mean if you're offering it to them to wear for the red carpet and they like it and their stylist likes it of course they're gonna accept it but that doesn't mean that they have to pay attention to what you're selling in your store so i feel like a lot of luxury brands especially need to make sure that yeah you're getting influencers and celebrities to have on your clothing but make sure that you're still keeping the same attention and focus on what brings foot traffic into your store um and as well as that the creative director since 2017 paul surridge has secretly resigned as creative director um by now the news probably came out already but about two weeks ago he has a source told women's word well a source told women's word daily i believe that he resigned because he felt like the design team wasn't getting the support that they needed that they weren't there was a lack of investment in the development of the refurbishment of the store networks hence you know they liquidated all of the u.s stores so he was right about something clearly and also he felt like there was a lack of development in the marketing and communications and i feel like for your creative director to feel that way that just shows you that the higher ups and the boards of that particular brand only care about the things that really don't matter that much they don't care about the footwork they don't care about the day-to-day -day operations on what it takes to keep this brand open but they care about the look or who who has the most followers that we can reach or who's the most famous that we can reach to have our clothes on instead of caring about what keeps your doors open um but last but not least, Nike is doing an exclusive capsule collection with the Parisian brand um, called Nois Etudions. Um, and it's designed by Romina Cardillo. The collection is really, really nice. Um, all of the pieces are, you know, in the pinks, the yellows, the blues, and the reds. Very bright colored. Very amazing. The All of the clothing is kind of like that quilted look. Um, I'll try to insert a video so that you guys can see it. But you can also check out Vogue Italia's Instagram. They actually have it on there as well. Um, but the collection is amazing. If you are able to purchase pieces, I think that they're worth this so i would but that is all of our news for this episode i want to say thank you guys for watching i do want to apologize again for being gone for two weeks with the breaking fashion news videos but we are back in in action um we had a few pit stops that stopped us from getting our video up but like I said, we're back. So make sure that you are turned on your post notifications for my channel so that you never miss an upload. And make sure that you subscribe to my channel as well if you like what you see. Um, and make sure that every week you're back for break fashion news. And during the week on Tuesdays and Thursdays that you're ready for our new videos. Because we do post every, well I keep saying we and it's just me. But I do post every Tuesday and Thursday. So make sure that you have on your post notifications and that you are subscribed so that you never miss anything and then if i can't get around to uploading a video it's not because i just chose not to i just probably couldn't um because i do have a pretty busy schedule
schedule but there is so many videos on my channel for you guys to be able to watch if i can't upload so make sure that you're catching up on all of the videos that i do have posted if you know you're missing me and i don't have anything up you can just go through my channel and watch what's up there is some great content but once again thank you guys again and i will see you in the next video peace out